One of the more common questions I receive about PM bus is how to capture a specific transaction on an oscilloscope. So I'd like to show you how to do that using a Tektronix scope that has embedded debug features added. In order to demonstrate capturing a single transaction on PM bus, I'm going to use again a Maxim EV kit, and I have it connected to my Tektronix oscilloscope with two channels, one for clock and one for data. And you can see uh, that I've got these configured on the scope to show the waveforms as well as the bus. And if you're interested in how to set that up, please see my previous video on how to do the basic debugging of PM bus using an oscilloscope. The first thing I'm going to do is start my GUI, which is running right now, but I'm going to begin communications. And now you can see that there are a lot of transactions going on on the bus. There's uh, constant bus traffic to both channels. You'll see 5A and 5B, which are my two slave addresses. And I'm triggering on the start condition right now. So basically, every PM bus transaction is being recorded, which is uh, good information. I can stop this at, at any point if I want. I can get a single capture. But if I want to look for a specific transaction, it's very useful to be able to trigger on the slave address and a specific command. And the way we do that is by changing the trigger setting on the scope to bus, and instead of triggering on start, we want to change this to trigger on address and data. And the address will be our 7-bit slave address. In this case, I have two available. I can trigger on 5A or 5B. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 5B. And then data, you can see I have this set to 88 hex. And the number of bytes that we're looking for is 1. And what we're going to look for is the slave address followed by command code 88. The direction is going to be right. The reason for that is because in PM bus, with one exception, all transactions begin with a write. So there's a slave address with a write bit, followed by the command code. So I'm going to clear my menu on the scope and let this run. And now you can see that it's capturing only command code 88 to address 5B. And of course, we're capturing quite a few of these because the GUI is pulling both outputs of my EV kit continuously. Now, if I change the GUI to look at address 5A, you can see on the scope that now it has stopped triggering. It's no longer capturing because it's not communicating to address 5B. If I change the tab to 5B, once again, it begins communicating. And you can see that it's Talking to address 5B, grabbing command code 88, D9, 81, and that matches up with what we have in the GUI for read VN. So we have D980, D981 showing up in the GUI, and that same data is showing up on the scope. So this is a very handy way to look at a single transaction and capture just one command. If you're having trouble or want to make sure that a command is going out to the part in the proper format, this is how you do it. And of course, these same techniques of triggering on a slave address and a command code can also be used to look for a slave address of the read bit and a certain pattern of data returned from the part. So if you're looking to see if your PM bus device ever returned a certain set of data, you can simply extend the number of bytes that you're looking for and change the transaction from a write to a read, which will look for the read after the repeated start, and then you can capture if that data occurs. That can be very useful if you're trying to see if uh, the part ever encounters an error or generates a certain fault condition, looking at the status CML, for instance, or if you want to see if a particular uh, reading for current or voltage occurs on the bus.